What's the best martial art for fighting? What martial art should I train in? Should I focus on self-defense or combat sports? These are questions I'm constantly asked. But now let me ask you a question. Do we really have to choose? The beauty of living in the 21st century is there are now more martial arts gyms per capita than there ever have been. Meaning the idea of having to pick one style for life is kind of outdated. So in today's video, I'm gonna tell you the top five martial arts you need to train. And we're gonna go over where they fall in terms of fighting, self-defense, and the all-important wow factor. Before I tell you my top five martial arts, be sure to subscribe and tap the notification bell. That way you never miss a new video. And then be sure to tell me your top five martial arts down in the comment section. Okay, so to make things a little more fun, I'm gonna present this list as though I'm talking about a lifetime of martial arts training. Meaning I'm gonna to talk to you as though we're starting out as a young kid, going into our teenage years, then our young adult years, then our older adult years, and finally our senior years. And as always, this is a subjective list. It's just my opinion, not a hard and fast rule. But my opinion is worth more than its weight in gold. So let's get started with number one. When we're talking about a young kid starting training, there's some things we need to keep in mind. Firstly, the training has gotta be fun. Honestly, it really doesn't matter if we're talking about a toddler or a fully grown adult. Nobody is gonna wanna train unless they're having fun. Even the most dedicated, disciplined, stoic samurai of a fighter does it because he enjoys it on some level. But that's even more important when we're talking about kids. As someone who teaches kids classes, I can say, if you can't keep them entertained, you can't make them train. You can yell at them, you can get after them, you can threaten them with violence. If they don't wanna do it, they're not gonna do it, and they're most certainly not gonna stick with it. You need to find something that's both mentally engaging and physically impressive. Secondly, you wanna establish a strong martial arts base. Something that's not too hard, but still takes advantage of their quickly growing bodies and brains. For me, the only martial art that checks all those boxes is Hapkido. A Korean martial art focusing on vicious upper body joint locks and throws, as well as explosive dynamic kicking techniques, I choose Hapkido as the first martial art someone should practice because like Taekwondo, it has very impressive, very versatile kicks and serves as a small introduction to stand up wrestling. Plus it's got a belt system, which we can go back and forth on for adults, but for kids, there's no question. A black belt system is a great way to keep kids interested and focused on their training. It shows them that with hard work and determination, there comes recognition and reward. Is it a little carrot on the stick and can the system be abused? Sure, but that's true of anything involving people, so don't throw the baby out with the black belt. But Taekwondo also has a belt system, so why not just go with that? Mm, honestly, no real reason. If you can't find Hapkido in your area, you can probably find Taekwondo and get just as much out of it. They are pretty similar at the end of the day. But what Hapkido has that Taekwondo doesn't have is its focus on Aikido style throwing techniques, which again, we can go back and forth on how useful these are in real combat, but we're talking about kids here. Kids don't have to have the most practical style training of all time. In fact, I would say that's counterproductive to making them interested in training. It's cool to know how to throw someone over your head. And more importantly, it's cool to know how to get thrown over someone's head. A benefit that's horrendously undervalued in martial arts is knowing how to get thrown to the ground. I can't tell you how many people I've seen get injured just falling on their butts. Even if you don't think the throws in Hapkido are all that realistic, you can't deny that knowing how to flip yourself up in the air and then land safely is an infinitely valuable tool to have in your arsenal. So with Hapkido, we get the benefit of the Taekwondo style kicks, plus a little stand-up grappling that is pretty cool and pretty flashy. And depending on the school you go to, there might even be some weapons involved. We might be talking about stuff like katana, short bow staff, long bow staff, nunchucks, Anything that Ninja Turtles might use, you could possibly find at a Hapkido school. Moving on to number two. Let's say you spent a few good years training in Hapkido. You started when you were eight, but you're now 11, 12, maybe 13 years old, and it's just time to move on. And let's say you're also now getting some schoolyard scraps. Not the worst fights of all time, but it would benefit you to know how to move around. So it's time to transition away from a martial art that's purely about fun, and one that can teach you some real practical fighting techniques. The martial art that I recommend is, of course, American Kempo. I'm just kidding, of course not. I would never say American Kempo. I kid, I kid, I kid. Never American Kempo. For your teenage years, 
I recommend you start training in judo and if your school offers it, wrestling. If we're talking about putting somebody to work, judo and wrestling, do that. You build a work ethic like nobody's business. You'll learn to struggle and push through that struggle. That's what judo and wrestling are all about. That's something that will help you not only as a martial artist, but in all areas of life. Having a strong work ethic will take you way farther than having talent ever will, particularly as you enter the disaffected youth stage of life. Also, these two styles, while being a pretty strong pivot from your Hapkido base, are not so different that you won't have any idea what you're looking at. There'll be some growing pains, there'll be an adjustment period, but for the most part, you're gonna feel like you're just focusing on the clinching and throwing aspects of Hapkido. So the transition will be big, but it won't be impossible. Secondly, I stand by the sentiment that the most important element of combat self-defense is the clinch. As in, what to do if someone grabs onto you or vice versa. Particularly, if we're talking about someone trying to defend themselves within the public school system. It's much easier to depend on throwing someone to the ground or wrenching their arm behind their head than it is to punch them in the head and hope that it knocks them out while also not causing serious brain damage. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna give you guys a little bonus with this video. I'm gonna give you my number one self-defense tip and all it's gonna cost you is that you smash that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and drop a comment down at the bottom letting me know how much you're enjoying it. Go ahead, I'll wait. Okay, good. So my number one self-defense tip, the best for sure way to keep yourself safe is to practice a martial art, any martial art. What you're practicing within that martial art may or may not help you in a fight, but that's really irrelevant because every minute that you spend in your gym, hitting the heavy bag, working your one steps, practicing your kata, rolling, whatever, is a minute you're not spending out at a bar or hanging out with people you're not supposed to be hanging out with. Not to mention you're also probably learning skills that teach you how to de-escalate a situation, but that's a separate conversation. Every minute that you're in the gym, focusing on bettering yourself and getting better at your craft is one where you're getting better at self-defense. So that's my number one self-defense tip. Just practice martial art religiously. So for martial art number three, I'm actually gonna offer a category of martial arts rather than a specific style. However, I'm still gonna make suggestions within that category, so this isn't a full cop-out. Either way, I suggest it's time for you to start training in a combat sport, particularly in the striking realm. So now we're talking about something like boxing, Muay Thai, kickboxing, even Kyokushin if that's your thing. Something that's very different from what you've been doing for the last few years, but is pretty familiar with what you started doing so those wheels start turning again. Ultimately, for martial art number three, you have to make a choice. I personally recommend picking something that's more or less the opposite of what you've been doing in your teen years. So we've been mostly focusing on clinch wrestling, now let's focus on striking. However, if you really like what you're doing, a, you can just stick with it because wrestling and judo are both combat sports, or you can move over to something like jujitsu or MMA. There's no problem in doing either option. You just have to make the choice to do that. The most important thing is that you're training, not necessarily what you're training. Okay, there's no way around this. Number four is a cop-out, but I think I'd make a good point, so just follow along. Because the fourth martial art I think you should practice is another combat sport. Let's say you start training Muay Thai at age 18 and you focus only on Muay Thai for 10 years. That's a very long time, but you're still not even 30. So now I think it's time to add another combat sport. In this case, again, I recommend either doing the opposite or complement. If you go with the opposite, maybe add some Jiu Jitsu. If you want to add a complement, maybe do something like boxing. Again, it doesn't really matter what you practice, just add something else in because you still have so many good years ahead of you. I personally don't subscribe to the belief that training two martial arts at once makes you worse at both. I honestly think that's kind of a scare tactic martial arts instructors use when they're worried their students are gonna leave them, but at that point, that becomes a question of how bad is your program, dude? I actually think it's good for our long-term brain health to have multiple things that we're doing at the same time. Do jujitsu on Monday and then boxing on Tuesday, Muay Thai on Thursday, whatever. Get as much in as you can because that's what it's there for. When you're in your 20s, 30s, even 40s, you're still very athletic. You still have a lot of really good years to train with. So take advantage of every inch of it. But that being said, I can hear you. 
Okay, at this point, I've mostly focused on combat sports. Even as a kid, I'm focusing on winning matches. When should I worry about self-defense? When do I talk about weapons or multiple attackers? Here's the thing. You'll get way more out of introducing a knife into your jiu-jitsu rolling once a month than you will making that your only focus. If you train like an athlete who every once in a while incorporates a rubber knife or a stick or multiple attackers or trains at night or out in a parking lot, whatever, if that becomes a small element of your training, you'll get way better at it than someone who only focuses on that small element. Finally, let's talk about martial arts number five, which I'm once again gonna break into two different categories. Option number one is gonna be Hema, Kali, or really any weapons-based system. Because the fact of the matter is, weapons are cool. Whether we're talking about knife fighting or dueling somebody while wielding an ax, using weapons is badass. And if you tell me it's not, you're lying. Is classical weapons training the most practical thing of all time? No, not really. That being said, let's circumvent that problem altogether. Because at this point, you spent 20, 30, maybe 40 years training in practical martial arts systems. That's not really something you need to be concerned with anymore. If something like using a spear catches your eye, well, first you should seek medical attention, but then you should train that. If you wanna devote years of your life focusing on the intricacies of drawing a sword from a seated position, by all means, have fun doing that. And I feel like I should say this now too, I'm presenting this as a list for the sake of having a way to talk about it, but honestly, if any of these martial arts and only one of these martial arts is what you're interested in, then go ahead and do that forever if you want to. That being said, option two, or maybe even martial art number six, if we wanna do it that way, is kind of in the same vein of just doing what's fun. Because again, you started your martial arts training doing a style that maybe wasn't all that practical, but was really enjoyable. And even though you moved on from it, you never left it. The first style you ever train in will paint the way you look at every other martial art. And yes, now you've trained in grappling styles, wrestling styles, maybe even a weapon style, but you still feel like something was left unfinished. So now you go back to hop keto. Maybe you didn't get your black belt and you wanna do that finally, or maybe you just wanna go back to the thing that was so much fun for you as a kid. Either way, you now take all of your years of experience and bring it back to what you started with. You enhance the training you already had, you modify what needs modifying, and you make yourself and ultimately the style better. That's the beauty of martial arts. Nothing is a fixed position, it can all be changed. And if you wanna go back to the thing that started it all for you, now's the time. So that's my top five martial arts you need to train. Like I said, I presented this as a narrative, as someone training from age six to 66, just to help the conversation flow. But really, this should serve as a template for anybody at any stage of their life. If you're trying to pick your first martial art, I think this template can help you. If you're already training and you wanna pick another martial art or just see what stage you're at right now, again, I think this video can help you. And if you agree, please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you wanna see more great content from me, why don't you check out these videos right here. As always, you guys, this has been Rob from Combat Self-Defense. I wanna thank you for all the hard work. Thank you for the hard work yet to be done. And I'll see you next time.